Hi everybody and welcome to Linkus. I'm so happy to be with you today uh, on Monday to talk about the second episode of Sanditon which was released yesterday and Sunday. I hope you guys like it, you, uh, you had it. Um, so we're going to talk about, I'm going to just give a bit of my insight and analysis as usual on what happened in episode 2. I've already did that, done that for episode 1. And uh, for this episode too, so I think that for those who are watching every week, it's on PBS. I think if you have a passport, you can watch it beforehand, but I'm not sure. So you can just like tell me, tell me in the comment. Uh, I don't know if you can watch it before. I kind of, hmm, I'm not sure. But me, I'm watching every week because I just don't have the time. And I think on Sundays when I can be a bit calm, you know. And I'm just like can watch my 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 series. So I'm definitely watch it very 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 late on Sunday. I think it was like Monday morning, but it was very very late on Sunday. And I'm going to talk about what happened. So I think there there are different things uh, to talk about. So as I said for episode one, I think that this season is quite calm. I don't know how to explain it. Um, I was I was waiting for action, but again. On season one, season two, they were not like season one, for example. I don't know if the characters, I don't know if the. But season one, for example, there were like some intrigues, love intrigue, but I know there were much more action. Maybe it's the beginning, but we had, we had of course, Sydney Parker, who had a, a very specific character, just to be said. Uh, we had also the intrigue between Aster and Long Babington, but I don't know, this tension was very much. It was a, a past. No, it was an active tension. Actually, I was going to say it's passive. No, it was active tension, because they were like teasing each other. I mean, Esther was definitely teasing Lord Babington, but there was something about it. On this uh, season three, I'm not feeling that. I don't know. If it's because we're just following what happened on season two, which was also a bit more like not that calm we had some intrigue even at the end with mr colborn and charlotte so it was good but season three i don't know this tension between the two characters is so passive like it's so calm i'm my heart is not like spitting like for season one season two maybe because i know what is happening like there is no tension because we we can see that they love each other so there is a there is no suspense we're just like okay they love each other that's why i'm like this but i well, yeah, I'm a bit disappointed because normally my heart was racing season one, racing season two. And even at the end of season two, you know, when basically they, they are not coupled, you know, they missed each other. Um, I was like, I was like, oh, no. Huh. And I did this identity this uh, in previous video. So you can definitely uh, and um, hear what I, I, I had to say about that. But on this episode two, we still have this passive tension between the two. Um, it's kind of longing, um, we just, um, I think, I mean, both characters are playing this really well, there's nothing to do, to say about it, but at the same time, I'm like, hmm, we know they love each other, they just conclude it, you know, you know, do something, because I don't know if I can stay, like, a bit more interested about that, I'm just like, okay. Yeah, we, we need we need definitely to, to talk, uh, say more about this. So I was like, okay, there's this tension. So there are different things that happen during this episode. So we have basically uh, Charlotte, who's still in Sanditon. Uh, Ralph, her soon-to-be husband, um, has returned to their hometown, you know. So she's there in Sanditon, but of course she's lying to herself. She said that she's saying for Georgiana because ev but everyone understands the tension be between her and Mr. Colburn. So we know that she's staying for him and she's just waiting for him to declare himself properly because I think that season two was not the case. Uh, and beginning of season one, last episode, it was just... Can we really use the word declare himself when you already know what the person think of you you know I think we cannot use this word I think we can say declare himself when you have no idea you don't know what the person thinks but you're just like okay I have I have to tell her what I'm I I'm feeling about her you know so it's not really declare but 
Charlotte already stand her ground on how she she felt or she's feeling with Mr. Colburn right now. Um, it, I think it's quite easy for him to say something, but he's kind of, you know, uh, walking on eggs because she's about to get married with Hart, with Ralph, sorry. So we just, you know, we know what will, will probably happen in season three and we're waiting for it. Uh, I don't think it has to be very long. I don't think the spectator can wait. I don't know if I can wait. Uh, again, one or two episodes knowing, if, except for a different uh, an action or something that happened that will compromise the relationship between the two. But otherwise, I think it has to conclude in a way. Um, the actress played very well. There's nothing to do about to say about that. At the same time, um, I like talking about this modern regency, you know, uh, thing and talk about also what is happening right now in our society. So, of course, Ralph in a difficult situation. He's the third wheel, of, <laughs> basically. Uh, I think he felt what happened between Charlotte and I think he felt how Charlotte was the moment he arrived at Sanderson because he told her, you're not the same, you know. So I think he understands what is happening, but he doesn't want to confront himself to the truth. And we can understand this. I think everybody in their life had at what point a, a moment like this where you you know the truth, but you're just not ready to confront the truth. And I think, and I've always said, and it's one of my faults also, you know, nobody, no, not everyone can hear the truth. So sometimes you have to keep it to yourself and people will resent you in a point that, at a point that you cannot imagine if you tell them the truth when they didn't ask for it. So I think it's a very personal journey into the truth. And I'm quite very like cautious when people are telling, oh, but he has to know, she has to know. No, no, no. Not everybody is, <laughs> is you know, ready I think each person has to confront them to the truth at each time. And it's also a work that I have to do on myself because I know that sometimes my tongue can be a bit hard and I, sometimes I can be, I can tell people the truth but they're just not ready for it and they will resent me, which I totally understand. But, you know, sometimes you just, you know, you, ju you just have to say, okay, it's not the right moment. Let's wait. Um... So, so yeah, it's about the the love story between the three. Uh, I mean, between the two plus Hart Ralph, unfortunately. We're still following Georgiana. Um, so basically, Lockhart, the, the artist from season two, is coming back, uh, claiming that he's the rightful heir to Georgiana's fortune. I mean, the fortune of her father. Um, and I'm... I don't know, this action was quite weird for me because Lockwood was a very strange character, but I've seen him from very far on season two. I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I saw the character, I was like, okay, this is this type of character. We know he's broke. We know that he wants some money. And he's pretending behind all these uh, ideas. And it's always the case, even in the normal life, like always people who are daydreaming all the time and you know, speaking about this idols and things, had the time to debate on things and they have no money whatsoever. So it's always really weird to me because I think when you have time to daydream, to debate and to do all these things, idol or to do things, to do your passion or whatever, uh, you have to pay the price in a certain way. So you had to work before doing things maybe you didn't like and then you, you, you earn the right to do what you, what you want. So it's just my personal view, of course you can have different views, but I've seen Lockhart from very far, I was like, okay, this is this type of guy, okay. Um, arriving on season three, I was not waiting uh, for him to reappear this way, but we can see that Georgiana is very like much affected by uh, what is happening. And I love basically the scene when um, Mr. Colden, you know, knew, he, he, he knows what is happening to Georgiana because he just, uh, eardropped the conversation between um, Charlotte and, and Georgiana and he's like okay so I will help him because he's definitely in love with Charlotte and he his brother is a lawyer Samuel and I really like because I really like the scene where the with the um, Samuel is basically with Georgiana and he's preparing her to the trial because Lockwood really want her money, 
and because he's claiming his wife, they have to go to the trial in order for her to defend himself herself. But really, we understand what happened. Sorry, we understand what happened at the time because we can see like how Georgiana, how uh, fragile she is in a point, and how um, not safe the environment is for women because the way that Samuel is pushing Georgiana is very hard. It's very harsh and. I don't know, I was just thinking about everything that happened right now in this society, and I don't know if people will agree with me, but um, all this feminism and everything, recognizing sometimes our... I mean, I don't think Georgiana is basically recognizing the fact that she's unable to do this. At one point, she, she is. She's saying, I, I don't know if I'm ready for it. And uh, it's basically that I once was in a trial uh i will not say the circumstance why i was there but uh i was also very 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 surprised about the how hard people are and i definitely don't think it's uh a word appropriate for for women in a way i still think that nowadays even if with anything that happened it has nothing to do with feminism I'm not going to say i'm feminist or whatever but it's just when we this scene really like draw me back to a situation where I was kind of in a difficult situation just because I was a woman and this word is still not made for us. And I was, especially with what is happening right now, we understand that, you know, the profits are not what people uh, expected it to be. And we can see that the system of capitalism is a bit weird. Uh, people have difficulties right now. We have the, the war, we have a, a high cost of energy and everything. And I still don't think, and with the fact that the capitalism push people to exploit employees more and more, which is how the system works, there's nothing to do about it. Uh, I mean, there's nothing we can do, I think, at your small scale, you can always do something, but uh, we're not like politician or whatever, I don't want to talk about politics, but this scene was like, okay, that reminds me of a different situation where I was like, oh, it's difficult for me just because I'm a woman, it's... Yeah, this word is not made for me. I have to create personal, my kind of cocoon, you know, my personal, um, let's say, my, yeah, my personal environment in order for me to thrive as a woman, you know. So um, I really like this scene and I hope Georgiana would change her mind because she's surrounded by friends, you know, and at the end, I think of the episode, she changes her mind. But I think that this scene was very, very important, and that reminds me of that. You can tell me in the comment, of course, what you thought about that. Um, um, we have also this ongoing, not I'm not saying the ongoing, but that this seemed to be maybe a romance between uh, Edward and Augusta. So as I told you from the last episode, Edward and Augusta I really like it because they have kind of this, she has this kind of... Um, Augusta, this kind of malicious, witty mind, and she is definitely, um, I don't know, there's something about her character who matched very well with Edward. The dynamic is very different from Esther to Edward, or even like, uh, yeah, Esther to Edward, because we know Esther loves more Edward uh, than Edward love her, so it's always a recipe for failure, but... <laughs> to my mind, uh, but but there there was Esther was a bit like the way she was teasing Lord Babington, she did indeed the same with Edward. And sometimes women we self sabotage ourselves by doubting ourselves and enabling our feelings to take other our minds. I think it's definitely one our our powerful gifts it's the ability to have our mind and our heart connected but in this world and especially with the example that i'm just giving you sometimes we just push our mind my, our heart to take over our mind and it's when the decision are awful and especially what happened Esther was basically one of my favorite character <laughs> in Sandy Teen season one and two I really like her I like how she was teasing Lord Babington season one I like her character her strength um she's very honest with herself she's um you know she, she's passionate in a way and um 
And we know that it, it would uh, make her fall in season one. But as I said, the strength that she was with Lord Darlington, because she let her, mo- her heart take over her mind with Edward, is how he played her. And I do think, and I'm going to talk about this in different episodes, and I really, I think I'm just going to make a series also on this, because there are definitely uh, things that are quite difficult for for uh, women nowadays, and I think we're losing our power where we, 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 we're thriving. Normally, we have to thrive. Even if there's war, our grandmothers, our mothers had this before. But even if uh, we are in a difficult situation, you know, your personal environment can be great. You know, it always happened. In war, there were always people suffering and other people were thriving. There's nothing we can do about that. But... Um, even nowadays, we still have this problematic. And I think Esther Amberde is really this problematic. And I think the way she was with Lord Hamilton <laughs> enabled her to, to win him um, to, to win him over. And I, I thought that their story was very great. And I think that's why Lord Hamilton was so fond of Esther, because she was herself. She, she was fearless in, in showing him who she is and teasing him, putting him in his right place, Telling him implicitly how to treat her uh, turned out to the, the turned out to be the best husband she um, she was waiting for actually because she 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 expected uh, Edward to be her husband even if they have um, they were coming from the same family or half brother and half sisters um, I think it's it's very so to come back to send it to send it in season three and I was just saying that. Uh, for me, Augusta is has the kind of same qualities that Esther when she was behaving her, herself properly with Lord Babington. And I think Augusta has also this witty, malicious mind. And that's why Edward is um, calling for her. I do think that Edward, <laughs> even if we know how his personality is, I do think he's really fond of Augusta. I really think that it's possible because she's entering the world. You know, she's entering the society. Uh, that's why Mr. Colburn wants her to go to the pool and to come to the recital and everything because she want, he wants her to be shown in front of everybody because it's the time. You know, she has to to look for, you know, proper husband, a proper, you know, person, partner. At the time, you say husband. Right now, we'll say partner, life partner. Me and more husband um, in her life. So I really like uh, the dynamic between the two. I think Edward is very sincere. And even if he's not, I think Augusta has the strength to win him over. You know, it's, I think it's also one of the power of women. And I think it's the power that we lost right now. Nowadays, I think it's the power to win people over. Um, even if at first they're just like no uh, it's a play or whatever I think we have the strength when we believe in ourselves and when we don't let our heart to take over our mind is where we can be the most fulfilling and powerful uh, person you know so we will see what happens but I think uh, Augusta sees uh, clearly in Edward's game uh, at, the, at the time, I think that if it's a close person has to be played, would be Edward, non, no Augusta. I don't think Augusta would be played. But I think it's quite, uh, it's quite understand. Uh, I, I really like the the dynamic. So we can see that on the preview of season three, we can see that the family that arrived in Sanditon were basically. Um, their, their father ruined their fortune and their mother is looking for a suitable heir. Uh, we can see that one of the daughters is basically telling Charlotte that she uh, she wants Mr. Colburn and her mother is actively uh, fighting for this union. And I think that reminds me because I wanted to make a video for you guys on sense sensibility. Sense sensibility. So I'm going to make a video on this. I think I'm, I will probably show you... Um, a new edition, I mean, a book that somebody basically uh, gave me. Uh, so it's Sense and Sensibility, Jane Austen. So it's uh, an old edition, but the way the book was, it's beautiful. I think the cover is made with a, you know, a kind of tissue. 
it's beautiful. I'm going to show you. But when I discovered this book, when they gave it to me, I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. It's my book. If I could have any edition in this cover, I would say like, yes, I'm so happy. Um, but yeah, sensibility. Um, I think that... Yeah, it's one of beautiful edition I will show you, but it made me think, um, yes, so it's main, it made me think of, I don't know if you remember, in Sensibility, we have a learner, and she, uh, at one time, she's helping a woman named Lucy Ferris, or something like this, Lucy Ferris, uh, because she... I think her and Edward promise each other to love and to get married, something like that. And the way that the woman is talking to Charlotte, I it reminded me of Lucy Ferrer. And I think she's going to finish like this because Mr. Colvin, I don't think he's the kind, I mean, the character embodies qualities that I really like in a man, of course. Um, I don't know if I prefer him with uh, Sydney, I don't know, but um, I really like some characters and I don't think that we can, you can win him over uh, really uh, easily because when Charlotte first arrived he was very much reserved because I think he's somebody that suffered a lot from her loss I think he lost his wife so of course that changed a bit the character and you become a bit more rough but there's something about him that uh, that makes me think that he's not somebody that you can win over really easily so hmm. Um, when she's saying that, oh, my mom is actively... I think her mom is very good in what she's doing, and I think she, she can do it. But with Mr. Colburn, I... Question mark. I don't know. But she looks like... And she has the same trait also. She has the same character and the same physique of Lucy Ferrers in Sense and Sensibility. So basically for those who um, forgot about that, but um, Lucy Ferrers, she was actively, you know... It was awful, really, because me, I've, I've seen that, I've read the book, of course, and I I, uh, I told you that my favourite uh, series of all time from Pride and Storm, um, Sense and Sensibility, sorry, it's the BBC 2008 version. I know there are all those versions, but there are always one adaptation that I really like and that I'm fond of. And in this version, we can see how Lucy Ferris is actively talking about Edward again and again knowing what Eleanor is suffering. She knows that Eleanor and, uh, and Edward had something and she's keep talking, talking, and in the film we can see it through, uh, beautifully. We can see how um, El Eleanor, she's, she embodies the quality of the sense, you know. So she's not really in her emotion. She always thinks before she... She feels, and we can see how difficult it is for her. Um, where Charlotte, for me, embodies also some of um, Eleanor's qualities um, in a way that she is strong, opinionated, she knows what she wants. And I think that after the disappointment that she suffers at the end of season two, when Mr. Colbin didn't declare himself, I think she became really a learner. I think she shut down a bit her part of emotions uh, due to successfully uh, twice being rejected, question, like in in brackets. <laughs> uh, yeah, being being because first Sydney decided to marry Rich in order to save his brother, and then we and when and then we have. So he married Rich in order to save his brother, and then we have uh, Mr. Colburn who didn't didn't declare himself. Where where when basically she was the most vulnerable toward him. So I think she embodied. She became a loner. She shut down her emotions. So I can see herself being the you know suffering from the emotional death dumping of this woman because it's basically what happened in sensibility. It's kind of emotional, you know. Don't know how to. I don't know if vamping is the right word, but like talking, you know. And I think everybody does that. You know, psychology. Everybody does that. People, some they are just like they they before asking if the person is ready to hear this. And I think you have done it also. It's normal, but before asking if the person is ready to hear it, you're just talking about you and how you felt, and you 
don't take into consideration what the person is thinking in front of you. Um, so yeah, I hope it will not happen to Charlotte, but I think it is, especially if Mr. Colburn doesn't do anything and he's kind of paralyzed by the fact she's going to get married and she's not married yet, you know? So yeah, we, we have, yeah, and I was going to forget. So basically we have, uh, a, a really talented singer who arrived at Sanditon and she had to, to come with the king, but basically we had, uh, we understand that King and Lady Susan, who is Charlotte's friend, have kind of uh, issues. Um, and I think at one moment, and I think everybody hear that, heard that at a moment, she said, uh, you know, Charlotte, sometimes men go quite wary and they distend himself uh, from you looking for nicer, um, easier, younger women um so um i don't know if i can talk about that i will probably talk it in another in another podcast uh she's it's true in it at the same time it's not true uh but i do think and i will say that that a lot of choices of um men that women make today um is going to have consequences 10 15 years i'm the kind of person who always think ahead uh, every decision that i have to make so i think it's quite interesting to see to see what we can think about that you know uh and i will leave you on that i don't want to talk more about this but i was always really happy I was quite tired yesterday but uh i was always really really fond of uh hearing um, what we have to on the charlotte's and sanditon um it's always my favorite series as I said, the only disappointment that I have is, like, I know, you know, yeah, we had this kind of lag because I know uh, what is, ha- we know what is happening between the two, so the tension is not there anymore. My heart is not being bombing out of my chest. I'm not surprised in any way except for the arrival of Lockwood and his problems, but otherwise I know what is happening, so I don't know. I'm waiting for, I think that we have, let me check, I don't know how many how many um, episodes we have for this season three. So season three. Oh, see, so it's only six episodes. Okay. Oh, I thought it was eight. So I think it was six. Season one, two, three. So six episodes. So we episode two. I hope that uh, there is also a good handing for charlotte because season one i was heartbroken because i thought that it was only one season i think it was the beginning i was like it's only one season and the end is that i was so much disappointed uh heartbroken i was <laughs> for her i was just like okay and i even made if you remember i don't know for people who who, who listen to me a lot i don't know there are a lot of people but I don't know if you remember, I made this uh, podcast and I talked about at the end and I was just like, <gasps> the book, because it's based on the book Sanditon. Um, the book is quite different from what we have normally because Sense and Sensibility, great, ended the book, happy ending, uh, Pride and Prejudice, Sense and Sensibility. But now with Sanditon, we don't have it. And I was, I don't know if you remember, but I was so disappointed. I was just like heartbroken. I was going, the end. And then when I knew it was season two, I was just like, yes, I was following Charlotte, really disappointed with uh, Theo Gem exit and the, the, the fact that Sidney Parker died character. So I was just like, and when I saw the end, I was like, again? And I was failing for her. You know, it was like emotional bump. Bams. and um, but now I'm just like okay I know what's happening I think that the tension is very cute uh, but you know I'm not like I'm waiting some for something more so we never know what happened I hope that the um, filmmakers are preparing something great for the end uh, I hope it's a happy ending and it will be then for Sinditon but um, I'm seem still really really happy to talk about that uh, so basically, um, I'm seeing you next week to talk about, I think I will release also on Monday, so I will definitely talk about um, Sanditon Season 3, Episode 3, 
uh, I think I will release also some podcast on why did I choose to name this channel Link Us, uh, what I'm intended to do with this channel. I think it's very important. I'm going to talk. I don't know if I will have time to make a reading on sensitivity. I will hope so. I think I will definitely also write uh, what I think about um, Sandy Chin, what I think about everything that this Regency drama era uh, I think about. I really want to talk about that also. Uh, how Link has, uh, has helped me, how I decided to do this, because it's a whole story about that. So I will probably release it maybe tomorrow, I don't know, but this week I will try. Uh, but I hope you have a wonderful week. It's Monday. I know a lot of people don't like this day, but me, I like it, actually. Uh, I see you. Uh, I'm releasing the, the analysis of scene 82. And I see you for episode 3 next week. Bye.